So feel free to just pop your questions at any time. Um, but let's just go ahead and get started. Um, so uh, the webinar titles there, as you can see, uh, the focus is going to be syncing and archiving HiQ documents and sites to your DMS using Syncly. And just to sort of like kick, kick start, um, we'll start off with introduction. So I'm sure you can see me here on screen, but if not, um, here's a quick introduction of who I am. My name is Adam Hassan. I'm a senior account manager at Assertis, and I'm joined here today with the CEO and founder of Syncly, Stuart Rasmussen. Sue, I'll just pass over the floor to you for your uh, quick intro. I know you're, you're here in the UK as well. Thanks, Adam. I think both you and I uh, look far better in our pictures than we do in person. You, you, look, you look rather professional in your, pro your profile photo. But hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, I am indeed the, the, um, the founder of Syncly. Um, I'm actually in London at the moment, um, but I'm usually based out in, um, in Sydney. So um, we are um, yeah, a, a global company um, and we have customers in the US, in Asia, in Europe, in the UK now. Um, so uh, fairly much, um, even though I live in, in Sydney, I spend most of my time commuting and uh, traveling the world. So thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stu, for joining us. And uh, glad to have you here because I know that we've had a lot of queries about Syncly. And uh, I, I'm going to uh, ask you to tag along to all, all upcoming meetings, uh, if you don't mind. <laughs> but um, for today, uh, so today what we're, we're going to be focusing on in, in, in this webinar just a quick um, the focus of this webinar is going to be about Syncly, but uh, Assertis, as you may know, uh, you know we are we specialize uh, as an I managed partner. Um, so I can give a quick overview of, of what we do alongside Syncly and other tools with I manage. Uh, but the purpose of this webinar today is to discuss how Syncly can be used between HiQ and your DMS to improve business processes, save time, and most importantly, reduce operational costs. Um, so. Uh, as part of this webinar, you're going to see a live demonstration of Syncly, um, and uh, we'll dive deep into what that looks like. And then, and then at the end, we're going to have some time for a Q and A. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, if you have any questions, you should see a questions tab. Please pop your questions on there, uh, and we'll answer anything um, on today's call, on today's webinar, or uh, as a follow-up if there's not enough time. But I'm sure we'll have enough time. Um, so. Just a quick overview of us. Um, uh, so, as you most of you know, I manage is first and foremost what we do. Uh, we're a leading I manage partner, um, but we also work with a number of other partners and solutions, uh, all of which are complementary to I manage. So, we'll be happy to cover this um, outside of this webinar at any time. But the focus of this webinar today is going to be simply uh, synchronizing your data and also archiving it um, between your DMS and HiQ. Um, but as you can see here, there's other solutions that we can we can focus on. But moving on, so Syncly. Um, to start off with, let me explain Syncly and the benefits. Syncly is a tool first and foremost that connects many of your existing solutions, you um, and many of your existing solutions to your uh, your data repositories together. So, for example, if you're using iManage. So, for example, if you're using iManage to store large portions of your working content, some of which needs to be saved into HiQ for easy collaboration with your clients and third parties, the process of moving data from one solution to the other can be very tedious and time consuming. Um, and also, this means that you're storing large amounts of data into two separate systems for a long period of time, which could create data silos um, and it's just less efficient between different departments. It's not easy to manage and nor is it cost effective. So what Syncly offers is a range of connectors as you can see here on the screen, which uh, which will no doubt pretty much uh, will have more connectors as time goes on. But these are the key solutions here that so we can provide, Syncly can provide that connection between different solutions. Um, so we'll go into sort of uh, in more detail of how it works. So as, as discussed, Syncly allows you to connect your data repositories together. Um, the syncing options, there's a couple of different syncing options, but they include one-way or two-way synchronization. You can also do a one-off copying of the data from one repository to the other. And you can also do a uh, one-off copy of the data while simultaneously deleting the data from an existing, existing uh, data repository. Um, it essentially, it's an archiving mechanism. Um, that allows you to move data from one area to the other um, while saving space on, uh, on a specific uh, uh, DMS that you're using. So to give you a workflow example, 
Um, initially, you may wish to set up a one-way or two-way synchronization for a specific matter. Then when that matter has been closed, to avoid any duplication or paying for two repositories, you can move that data altogether back into iMesh while simultaneously deleting the duplicate information that's stored on the HiQ sites. This essentially uh, will help you to manage your uh, risk and compliance policies from a data perspective, but also more, um, significantly uh, reduce the operational costs related to storing that data um, into, into HiQ. Um, so what we're going to do is show you a live demonstration. Uh, hopefully all of that made sense, but the demo will go into an actual actual sort of walkthrough of how that looks and feels and works. So Stu, if I pass that back over to you, um, you should be able, I'll just see yeah, if I can. Yeah, Dan, I'll just share my screen when you might be the presenter. Um, but just while I'm doing that, guys, um, this is a bit more of an introduction. So um, I have worked for um, a large portion of my career um, around content management systems. Um, both I managed, actually started my career working for an iManage partner here in, in the UK um, and later on in relation to HiQ ran their operations um, across Asia Pacific just prior to the Thomson Reuters acquisition. So I've actually worked with a lot of the systems that we're talking about today. Uh, I understand the legal process. I've been involved in that for around about 15 years altogether. Um, but we're also um, luckily enough to be able to call, uh, you know, have investors in our business. Um, some of you who might know Stuart Barr, who probably was, the, I guess, the face of HiQ. Um, many moons ago, um, only a couple of years ago, sort of took his took his exit, and now out learning golf or whatever you do when you um, when you semi retire. Um, but we've got him on our team as well as an investor and director. So we're sort of building this team together now with a specialist focus on content management systems. So um, you know what you're going to see today is going to be really simple. Um, so I'll just share my screen now. You know, and the purpose is um, the purpose of 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 why we've created it to be simple is because you know there's there's a lot of tools out there um, that are really pretty and great to use when they're focusing on the lawyers using something a lot of effort goes into making sure that the lawyers are able to use these tools but not a lot of effort goes into making sure the administrative teams the IT teams the innovation teams or whoever it is also have you know easy to use and and, and you know enjoyable to use software so I've got to focus on that a clear focus on, on making sure our product remains that way um, but I'm just on the website at the moment, right? So it's a breakdown of pretty much what Adam told you. Our focus is, our core pillars are the connection stack, right? and this is the, basically the foundation of our company. Um, this allows us to introduce any connectors, whether it's Salesforce in the future, or whether it's CRM Dynamics, Microsoft Dynamics, it, it, it really doesn't matter. We now have a foundation for introducing um, connectors, integration connectors, um, that are all going to be able to operate independently of one another. So if we write, you know, today we might talk about iManage and HiQ as an example workflow, but it doesn't matter if it's iManage and HiQ, iManage and NetDocs, if you ever had that scenario, iManage and SharePoint, SharePoint and HiQ, it doesn't matter. They're all interoperable. So that's the foundation of our platform. We then go into that automation of the movement of data, okay? And, and that's really a key piece that we're starting our business journey on. And it's about making sure that there's we're solving the problem of saying, hey, if you guys are collaborating with your customers, and even if you're collaborating internally on projects, but that, you know, if you're an in-house legal team, you know, you're sitting there going, well, we operate our business out of iManage or NetDocuments or, or something, but the rest of the organization runs out of SharePoint. Um, and so making sure that you're collaborating freely through that. And we're seeing teams predominantly sitting in the middle a lot for internal collaboration and in the future, external collaboration with clients as well. Um, and the problem there is, you know, as you start to create data silos, we all know what the problem there is, who, who's accessing the right version of the document. So Syncly in the middle takes care of that. But the other issue as well, when it comes to sort of um, sharing information with your clients, there's a massive lag between, you know, we make these changes to contracts, we upload more information because our e-discovery process has discovered more vital contracts that need to be shared out and, and collaborated on. Those things happen at quite a rapid pace internally at the law firm, but unfortunately that doesn't always flow through to the customer. Um, and they're sitting there waiting for the update and they're sitting there maybe a day or two waiting for the lawyer to sort of re-upload the information or update the information. So that automation of movement is really critical. And then of course, at the end of that process, you know, often you're not just sharing the documents, you're creating other assets. So if it's in Haiku, you're creating blogs and wikis and tasks and, you know, eye sheets and all sorts of things 
going on that are relevant to the process that you've just gone through, the matter or, or whatever it is that you're working through HiQ on, that data is, is critical that you store that data back, right, for records purposes, we all know. Um, but in Teams, it's the same. We start to have conversation history, right? We've got our documents, great but we're also creating other data assets, just as important from an audit trail perspective. And so when we talk about archiving, we call that out separately because our syncing is all about syncing documents. Our archiving is documents and associated assets. So all of the other things that you create in those systems of collaboration. So that's the breakdown of the platform. Um, Syncly is a cloud-based system, right? So we get clients up and going inside an hour. It, it really doesn't take long to get um, you know, what we talk, what we talk about in the industry, time to value. Um, it really is literally an hour. Um, you know, we tend to sort of give you guys a little bit of homework to set up permissions. There's some security stuff that you need to sort out on your side. Um, once you've done that internally in the firm, we flick a switch, simply stood up, we do a phone call with you and you've got your first sync up and going. And it is as simple as what I'm going to show you today. So we've talked about the connector stack and I won't go into the detail there, right? You, you can add connectors. Um, there's a bunch of things that make us make make law firms comfortable with how we do this. There's um, you know, a lot of security focus that we put in to how those connectors work, how they're authenticated um, and those sorts of things, but I won't get into that in the demo today. Needless to say, we've got clients like Perkins Coie in the US, uh, Herbert Smith Three Hills globally. You know, they've put us through the ringer um, in terms of their info security process. Um, so you know, we haven't got anything to worry about there. Once those connectors are put into the system, um, you know, most of the work happens here, right? Um, sorry, I'll just minimise this. Most of the work happens here, um, and it's the creation of a workflow. Everything you do in Syncly centralises around the creation of a workflow. And there's a couple of ways that they can happen. So first of all, predominantly, you're going to come into the Syncly web app that we're in today, and you're going to create a new relationship or a new workflow. So we do that by simply choosing the source system, and that can be anything. If you're on Net Documents, I manage. So forgive me, I'm not, I'm not biased, but obviously, you know, um, I'm just going to choose I manage here today, given that Assertus um, have a large focus on that. Um, but this can be any source system. It can be SharePoint. You could even be using HiQ as your document management system. It doesn't matter. We're then looking into. Oh, sorry, I've chosen an on-prem I manage there, which doesn't have much. I'm going to choose Cloud I manage. Sorry. We're then looking into Cloud I manage, um, and I'm looking at the matters that I myself normally have access to when I'm in iManage. So I'm not seeing anything I shouldn't see here. And I'm going into my matter and saying, okay, great, you know, um, you know August sleet sounds maybe like what's coming down the line uh, for, for uh, London weather soon. Um, I'm gonna go into the August sleet project and I'm gonna choose the folder that contains the information that I'm syncing. This can be a combination of folders. It can be the entire matter workspace if, you, if, if you're sharing all of that. But again, it really, it doesn't matter. We don't mind, right? You choose to whatever level that information exists, you choose where the synchronization starts. So anything in the emails is going to be synchronized. I don't know if this has folders, it might do, um, but we can, you know, it does. So I could even go into a subfolder of the emails, it doesn't matter. I then repeat the process for the target system, right? Where's that information going to be syncing? Um, you know, a lot of people on the call today, I believe are, are HiQ customers. So let's, let's pick on HiQ and this could be Teams, it could be SharePoint, it could be anything. And again, I'm going to choose a HiQ site. So where is the, where's the documents that are stored in that emails folder of iManage? Where are they going to synchronize into my HiQ site? Um, Syncly 51, I'm going to sync them into the main folder. I can sync them into the root level of the file of the files module as well. This is the files module that we're looking at in HiQ. That's it. We've got our connection. Now, Sync, all that Syncly really wants to know is what's the direction of flow of data? Is it one way from source to target, or is it actually bi-directional? Um, again, you know, it, it, every use case is different. Every law firm uses us slightly differently. Um, but if you are, you know, truly collaborating with your customers, maybe two-way synchronization works. Definitely internal. Like I said, if you're a legal team operating out of iManage or Net Documents, and your sales team are operating out of, you know, um, SharePoint, then a two-way sync makes complete sense. You can continue to work how you work in iManage, and the sales team can continue to work how they work in SharePoint. We'll choose a one-way sync because it seems to be the most predominant, especially when it comes to law firms. You know, two-way syncs opens up a whole another raft of conversations that I tend to have. Um, but a one-way synchronization is quite easy to understand, right? And then we just configure that one-way sync. Um, so pretty simple to understand what these options are, right? Does that folder contain existing stuff that I want to sync or do I want to start it from today only? So everything else previous gets ignored. 
do I want to synchronize the latest version only? So every time I change it in iManage, it gets updated in HiQ. If I turn that off, then if I've got five versions in iManage, then you'll have five versions available to whoever it is inside HiQ. That's up to you. Again, how, how you sort of want to manage that relationship and what the purpose of that sort of HiQ site is. But it doesn't matter what we choose there. Down the bottom here, we're able to sort of say, okay, I want to, I want to monitor, I want Syncly to monitor, for, obviously for anything that gets newly created, probably obviously anything that gets updated, but also renamed. If I rename a file in iManage, it gets renamed in HiQ. If I move a file or a folder, it gets moved. So we're sort of creating that mirror image uh, inside HiQ. So we monitor for all of these things. The lawyer just carries on doing what they do in iManage. They carry on managing the process of saving and updating documents, not having to worry about the fact that they now need to go and go through a manual process of then uploading those changes into the portal um, or getting a legal assistant to do that for them. That's pretty much it, right? That's it. I could just next, next, next now and we're done. Um, we've got some options for filters and we can go in there and say, hey, only synchronised documents that are PDF or or don't synchronise documents of PDF, but everything else. So we can use filters to sort of start to control a little bit more granularity around which information, what, what, what information gets synced. But then it's pretty straight through, right? Alerts are fairly self-explanatory, um, except they don't, they don't do it on the positive, they only do it on the negative, right? We're not going to alert you every time it does a sync, because that's annoying. Um, you, I'll show you later, you can come into the Syncly platform at any time and see the history. Um, but we are going to alert you if there are any issues really important, especially if you're working on a time sensitive matter and you're trusting Syncly to be doing what it's meant to be doing. If for some reason Syncly can't do that, um, for example, if your HiQ account gets locked out, well then Syncly can't run either because it's using your HiQ account. So it might not be because Syncly itself is broken, but it could be something else in your technology environment that's broken that stops the synchronizations from running. You want to know about that straight away. So you're like, ah, yep, okay, my client hasn't received updates. I need to go in and fix that problem. So it's really just making sure that we're aware and we're always alert, even if we're not in the Syncly web app checking it, right? Nine times out of 10, these are real-time workflows. We can set them as manual, so you can just ad hoc come into the Syncly platform and click run, and it will go back to the last time it ran and find any changes and perform a sync and then go back into manual for you. Um, and we're about to release a scheduling functionality as well, which will allow you to say, hey, real-time, but only on Fridays after 5 p.m. or something like that. That's it. Uh, we've created our first, um, our first, uh, I'm going to say webinar, I can't talk and type, I'm always terrible, uh, our first workflow. Okay, that takes us back to our workflow module um, and you can see that we've now got an active workflow. Okay, so um, I won't bore you with logging into iManage and, and, and HiQ and you know uploading documents, but what I do want to show you is as those workflows perform actions on your behalf, the entire audit history is here. So this is one that's been running for a little while now. Um, and you can see that, you know, actions on folders are captured, actions on files are captured. Um, I can even um, drill down and um, I can sort of try to find something here for you that's a little bit different. What have we got? You know, okay, there's a file that was ignored um, because it was an unknown file type. You know, so all of those actions are captured. It was a rename, it was a move, it was an update, they're all there entire audit history is there for you guys, okay? Um, just while we're on the managing this stuff, um, quite often, especially when it gets to um, the situation of a massive e-discovery case and things like that, you're uploading bulk amount of data, you don't always know that there are some interesting documents in those. Um, so sometimes the synchronization will run into an error. And this is an example of a sync that's running. It's still active, it's still running, still looking for things and all good. But at some point along its journey, it's found a file that it couldn't sync. Okay, it happens to be what's, this is a, what's called a DS store file. It comes from Mac OS and they're a hidden file, but sometimes those hidden files get uploaded as part of a bulk upload. Um, and obviously iManage isn't gonna like that file because it's going, hey, I don't know what a .ds store is. I'm not, I'm not willing to accept that file type, All right? You might say, no, actually, I want to, I want to synchronise that. That's fine. Um, but you can also sit here and go, no, that's fine. Just ignore that file. I'm not worried about it. The workflow then just goes straight back into its, its operational mode. And you can see that there's now no, no exclamation mark. So error management, visibility over the history and those sorts of things are all baked in to the platform. And the only other workflow I want to show you guys today, because we've talked about it, is the archival process. So again, um, a workflow is created and this time I'm going to choose HiQ as the source, right? Because that's the, the, the source of the data that I want to archive down. 
and I'll choose a high queue site. Doesn't matter which high queue site it is. I can then choose a target. And again, I'm probably going to archive down to something like iManage. You might have a records management system. Again, we're, we're building out our list of connectors, so it could be anything in the future. But for now, just to show you what this looks like, um, I'll just choose a random um, iManage workspace. We're now presented with a fifth type of workflow that didn't show up before, right? So Syncly knows, oh, hang on, you've chosen a, a connector and, and, and things that actually is, is archive enabled. Teams, we can archive teams and we can archive HiQ at the moment. In the future, we're going to be able to archive iManage itself. But if you look at an archive for HiQ, you can see that there's a whole bunch of different options here now, right? So if for those of you who are HiQ familiar, you know, this will all look pretty similar, right? Wikis, blogs, tasks, eye sheets all the things that kind of get created, your content management audit, right? The, the main audit report that you kind of always want to run, right? Who accessed what and the timestamps, it's quite a massive spreadsheet, but it's really critical to be able to prove evidence that someone accessed a document, downloaded it and read it and changed it and all that sort of stuff. So we're running everything for you, right? Pretty much everything that we can, we, we, we automate that process. And this could be a hard, huge, this could be 100 gig, 200 gig, it doesn't matter. It can contain files that are 30 gigs on their own. It, it, we've, we've stress tested this enormously. One of our biggest customers is Macquarie Group or Macquarie Bank. Um, and they have archived many terabytes of data using this tool. So it's, it's um, you know, quite comprehensive around what it captures and quite robust in terms of how it can sort of plug and just carry on and archive large amounts of data for you. So that's an archival process. Um, and the only other thing to mention is that we do also have a plugin. If I look, quickly look at, um, at, our, at our iManage instance, we do have an iManage plugin for those of you who are iManage customers. And we also have a SharePoint plugin as well for those of you who are SharePoint heavy. Um, but let me just quickly um, log in here and, sorry, give me a second, uh, and just quickly show you what the plugin looks like. It always asks me to log in twice, I don't know why. So if you are native in iManage and you are a lawyer, you don't want to have to go into the Syncly web app, you're not setting up synchronizations, you probably don't want your lawyers setting up synchronizations. So the web app is designed for those sort of administrative people, the people that are responsible for setting those relationships up. But as a lawyer, I quite often just want to get a document out. I don't care if it's synchronized, it just needs to be a very quick kind of, you know, send that document, put that document into IQ. Um, so we're able to go into any workspace inside iManage and we can click on a file or a folder, it doesn't matter what level, and you can see that I've got a contextual option here called Publish. Um, that basically launches a very slimmed down version of Syncly and it's just performing a one-off uh, well, publish, right? So a copy of that data. And it's just it's not a sync or anything like that, it's just going to copy the data or the documents contained in that folder and it's going to copy it out to, um, to whatever location you choose. So you, you'll end up, once this logs through, I haven't used this for a little while, you'll end up choosing a connector. And say, great, where do you want to copy this information through to? Okay, I'm going to copy that to IQ. It's the only connector that I've got permission for as a lawyer. Great, go through, choose a location, and the copy happens. All right, that copy process is also captured for administrative reasons inside the Syncly web app. Okay, it will be captured here as a workflow that is completed. Um, you know, so these are all my completed historic um, workflows. And you can see that there's a bunch of copies and archivals and sort of things that have happened. So there we go, guys. That's the Syncly platform. It's really meant to be simple, right? There's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes around how we manage conflicts and all the nuances of how I manage stores documents compared to SharePoint. That's our problem. We've well and truly taken care of that. You shouldn't have to think about that. It should be really easy for you guys to administer the relationship between whatever the systems are that we support as connectors. So hopefully that's um, given you what you were looking to see today. Um, but yeah, I'll pause there um, and, and we can jump into some questions if we wanted to. Great, perfect. Thank you very much, Stu. Um, there were a couple of questions that have popped up. Um, my uh, marketing manager is just pop, pumping them through over to me um, as we go, but I have a question here. <laughs> Um, so I got a question here, which is related to encryption. So it says, the question is, some customers worry about data journey. Um, are there any encryptions during the flow? Yeah, uh, 100%. Um, so we use um, the AES 256-bit encryption, which sort of seems to be what should be, if it's not industry standard now, 
Um, it's more or less the highest level of encryption that anyone can perform without really suffering performance if, unless you're in the military. Um, so AES-256 encryption at rest and in transit. Um, the encryption, everything is encrypted, even the, the workspace, the workflow names, and you saw in the audit, I've got all the file names, they're all encrypted. So I actually don't see any of that as a company. Um, and from my perspective, um, you know, yeah, Syncly doesn't see any of that information. So fully encrypted, you can even go and manage and store your own encryption keys. So we can, um, all that encryption can happen and we can store the encryption keys for you um, and that's fine. Other customers say, hey, all of that encryption and I want to store the encryption key, that's fine as well. So we, we support all of that. Great, perfect. Um, got a couple more questions here. I'm just going to fire away. Um, so the next question is, if a document is viewed, edited or printed in a DMS like, um, let's say, uh, SharePoint, um, does the timeline update in iManage? So we don't interfere with the timeline in iManage. So any action that's performed in iManage, like like you say, the printing and all that sort of stuff, still still gets retained. We don't interfere or, or interject with that. We will in we we'll have input to that. So whenever Syncly performs an action, right? So whenever Syncly does a, a a sync, right? It finds a new document and syncs it up to HiQ. Just think of that like a normal user doing that, but it's Syncly performing it for that user. So the timeline is is still exactly as you would expect. You're just going to see that Syncly is performing some of the actions as well as, you know, end users inside iManage. Um, so yeah, it doesn't break anything, only adds to it. Okay, perfect. And to follow up on that, there's a question related to migration of content. So the question is, uh, um, I think I already know the answer to this, but could Syncly be used to migrate content, for example, from SharePoint to iManage? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I laugh because this is like the migrations are the, the ghosts that won't stop haunting me. Um, <laughs> there'll be no surprise there. Yes and no. Um, it really, what the devil is in the detail around data migrations. Um, we do, we have used it, right? Yeah, so yes, at a very basic level, sure. A migration is just the movement of documents and that's what we do. The detail is generally when we talk about a migration, we talk about documents and the metadata and we're doing a manipulation of that data as we go. And sometimes you're wanting to remap that data into a new structure. You know, when you're starting to get into the manipulation of the data as it moves into its new home, um, then no, we don't do that piece. But if it's a very simple lift and shift, yep, absolutely. Great, perfect. Um, and another question related to, so this is a question related to APIs. So do you have APIs um, and do you have any power platform connectors? Mm -hmm. Another very common question. Um, the answer is yes to the APIs. Um, and so I'm imagining what you're, and what the person is asking there is to say, hey, can we automate the creation of the workflow? Do I need an end user to go into Syncly and do what Stu just showed me? Um, the answer is no, you don't have to. Um, that entire workflow can be triggered you know, performed through an API, which could be triggered through the Power Automate. The Power Automate piece is the no. We don't currently have a strictly Power Automate Syncly app or anything like that, um, but it, it, it's something that we uh, are considering because every law firm at the moment is asking me to do this. And it tends to pertain to like um, what our matter on, what our client onboarding or our matter, you know, creation process is, hey, we're automating the creation of a matter workspace in iManage, we're automating the creation of a synchronization of a site in HiQ, we want to automate the, the relationship between the two. And, and so it, it makes sense. Um, so we sort of part way there, if that makes sense. Great, perfect. Um, and I think we're just slightly over, but this is the last question. Um, the question is, where are your cloud servers? Do you use Azure or AWS? We're Azure. Um, and so we're deployed at the moment in um, a, an Australian data center, as you'd imagine, um, the European data center. So we're paired across the Netherlands and Ireland um, and the US. I forget what the pairing is in the US, but quite easy for us to deploy into more or less any Azure um, geo region. Great. Fantastic. Perfect. Well, thank you, everyone. That's the, uh, the end of the webinar. Uh, I'm sure there's more questions that are going to come. So please feel free to get in touch with us. Um, uh, as as mentioned, Stu's going to be here for uh, how long till Stu? How many weeks are you going to be here? A month. So if anyone wants to see a me, month. I'm happy. Yeah. Great. Perfect. So uh, 
definitely we'll, we'll I'll get in touch with uh, with you Stu and, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of follow-up uh, after this um, but uh, thank you everyone for joining the webinar and Stu thank you so much for sharing and demonstrating uh, Stinkly. Thanks for having me. Thanks everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye. Yeah.